I'm so glad you came in to see me. I've been thinking a lot about you and worried about you as you go through the divorce process and how it's been for you. But uh, why today? Why are you in to see me now? Well, thanks for making the time. I... It, it's very hard. Um, I'm thinking about the high holidays, and I don't know how I can sit in the sanctuary. I'm afraid somebody will give him some honor, some aliyah, something, and I will have to sit there knowing what he's done to our family and listen to holy words come from his mouth. I don't think I can bear it. Dean, I, I can't even imagine how hard that would be. First to come back and be in the sanctuary will be hard and to be here this year and it'll be different. But that would be completely unfair. That would be very wrong for him to have an honor this year. And I can do something about that. I can promise you he won't have an honor. He doesn't have the right. It's hard sometimes to be here when he's here. When you're in the sanctuary and he's in the sanctuary as well, it doesn't feel safe to you. It doesn't. It doesn't. I try to sit, I, I try to sit in places that I know he won't sit. Mm -hmm. It is your community, and it is your sanctuary, and you as a member of the community have the right and the need and the obligation to be here and to be able to be part of our services. He too has a seat in the congregation, but it is our job as a community to help you feel as safe as possible and to help it be rebuilt for you. Maybe we can help you more by seeing that people you feel comfortable will come and sit by you. Maybe that'll make it feel a little more safe for you. Every way we can help you be here is our job. And every time you come back in the synagogue, every time you come in the sanctuary, you are rebuilding for yourself. People know him. They come up to him. They shake his hand. I feel like people don't believe me. Mm -hmm. They say things like, well, there's two sides to the story, but they didn't see what he did. Well, I don't know how much of your story you've told people. And, and it's hard, and it's your right to not tell everyone everything, to have privacy. And it's hard for people to know what to believe as well. I think that if you can choose to talk to people who you trust, maybe you'll get a little more support. I know that's hard. It's hard for me to even think you should have to do that. But you have to give people a chance to help you. Where is God in all this? Sometimes I wake up and I'm so angry at God. How could God let this happen? How does it serve anyone? What I know about God, what I understand from our tradition about God, is that first of all, you are allowed to be angry and question and struggle, and that the God that you are praying to has nothing to do with the bad choices that Ben made. Why does nothing bad happen to him? Why isn't he punished? Uh, just when I think everything's going to be okay, I come home and there's some nasty email or a message on my answering machine. It's like he still gets to behave the way he behaved, only now he gets to do it through the court. And I have to, every time I turn around, I have to write declarations and write letters. And I can't even, 
remember all the pieces sometimes. The healing is hard. It's slow. It's not neat and clean, and I wish it could be. You have done the hardest thing already. You've gotten out of there. You've taken care of your children. You're making sure they're getting counseling. You're getting counseling. You are doing the things that you need to do to build your new year and your new life. He has not yet decided to change. You have no ability to do that for him. I thought everything would be better when we, when I left. I, I, I had to leave. We couldn't take this anymore. And you did the right thing. But it doesn't get better at once. What can I do to help it get better a little bit for you? I don't know. I, I am trying really hard to be present for my children, to make a, a happy space. Mm -hmm. A safe space, you've already done that. To celebrate the holidays. But I don't know if I can do it. You have done what you need to do for your children. You have done your job. That's what we're called to do. I see you doing such a great job as a mother and caring about so many things and wanting to keep them safe and wanting to give them the Jewish holidays to make things as real and normal as possible. I'm trying, I'm trying. I think he's trying to confuse and turn the children against me. My son is angry. I don't blame him for being angry, but he's angry at me. I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I had to leave. Dana, I would be glad to see your children and talk with them a little bit if that would make you feel better. And you keep sending them to therapy. Lots of people are around to help. You don't do this alone. It takes a community. Everyone will do their part. That's actually the other piece. I'm so grateful for that and I feel so much like a burden. It's such high demand that I need. I don't know that I can make Rosh Hashanah dinner by myself. I just don't think I can do it. It's too big a thing to do right now. It will be enough to get to services and to try and be there for the holiday. How about if we found a family you could share the holiday with? I think that would be wonderful for another family to have a bigger celebration and, and maybe make it a little sweeter for you. I'd be very grateful for that. It's hard when people in the congregation don't talk to me. There's always a feeling like Somehow, this is his place, and I'm an outsider, but my children have grown up here. It is your place. It's a synagogue. It belongs to all of us. And sometimes we have to help people know how to be in community. So to ask someone to share holiday with you, that is good for you and good for them. It feels like it just never ends. I think he's, he's controlling us about money. He hasn't paid the school fees. They're calling me. The religious school fees? Yes. And he is supposed to pay and take care of all of those expenses. He is. He's, I'm not getting hardly any money from him. I'm looking for a job, but I don't have one yet. 
Well, let's talk about the school fees. He needs to be accountable, but I don't want your children to be touched any more by it. So from our part, we will see that, that those bills don't go to you any longer. And of course the children will not be made uncomfortable. But the congregation needs to follow through with him and keep him accountable. He doesn't do anything that's been asked of him. The guardian ad litem told him he was supposed to see a domestic violence counselor. He hasn't gone. Feels like you're the only one who has to work and has to struggle with this. It does. I'm almost divorced and he's still controlling everything. You know, he is an abuser. His problems that he is causing in your life and the kid's life, those are all the results of his chosen behavior. You cannot fix that now. It's very hard to understand and accept things that we can control and the things that we cannot. Dana, we cannot change him. He has to be accountable as best as anyone can make him be. The high holy days are all about accountability. He can say the words, but his behavior doesn't show it. But am I supposed to forgive him? How can I forgive him? You take the holidays so seriously. It's the way we're supposed to be thinking. But forgiveness, for you to forgive him, would mean he would have to ask you for forgiveness and he would have to do the things that we are called to do to be forgiven. He has not done any of that. He continues his bad behavior. And you are not called upon now to forgive him. You are called upon to do your own healing and to write your own course. Just because it's the holy days and the words of forgiveness are right in front of you doesn't mean you should pretend it's all done and give him a blanket forgiveness that he is not entitled to at this time. Your job now is to work on your own life. I wake up in the morning and it's hard to get through the day. I try to say morning prayers. Sometimes I can't even get through all the prayers. I just get one or two. Dina, trying to pray right now is a wonderful thing and such a hard thing. Prayer is a way of checking in with God and just trying to do that is a good thing for you. But until life gets a little easier until things start to heal. Anything you can say is enough. I believe God will hear you wherever you are and whatever you can say. It doesn't have to be everything. Sometimes I get up and I say, it's a new day, God. It's a new day. And together, we can change everything. What makes it hard is at the end of the day, I'm not sure anything has changed. That, that prayer, it's a new day, God, thank you for the new day, is a beautiful prayer. But it's a process the whole day, little bits, little steps, we do it slowly. <sighs> My prayer for you is that it's a Shana Tova, a new year for you. And each day gives you something, something new, a chance to get a little better. And we will do everything 
that I can do, the community can do, to help you have a new year and help you feel a sense of God's presence. Thank you.